don't give in to the weakness of the flesh. It's time to overcome the temptations of the devil, the distractions of the enemy, the attacks of the enemy. And these temptations and distractions could show up as selfish appetites, worldly pleasures and things of this nature. The Bible says in Matthew 26 verse 41, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing to do the spiritual things of God and not fall for the temptations of the evil one, but the flesh is weak. It is your spirit man that connects with the Holy Spirit and pushes down the flesh man, the things of the flesh. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We can't let the flesh rule over us. We have to, the spirit, our spirit man that is connected with the Holy Spirit is is what we need to be feeding strengthening so we can have the, the the strength to push down the flesh to resist the temptations of the evil one to resist these distractions these sins and so on and so forth so i'm telling you don't give in to the weaknesses of the flesh we can't afford to do that it could be anything from laziness to read your bible laziness to pray laziness to sit in the presence of god it could be lusting over a brother or a sister when you know they're married or when you know god is saying no it could be anything of this nature it could be addiction masturbation pornography it could be jealousy you know these weaknesses of the flesh that are just not the spiritual things of god they're of the flesh they're of the sinful nature of the flesh and then we turn around and say well i would stop if i could but i can't but that's just the life from the pits of hell because you can do all things through christ who strengthens you you see, can you see that when we give the devil a foothold, he just puts the next foot in and the next foot in, foot in, and it just becomes a big fat mess. This is why the Bible says, don't give the devil a foothold. You see, when the devil tempts you and he fails, you have dominion over him. But when he tempts you and you give in, you give him power over you. It works both ways. The Bible says in John 14, verse 30, this is Jesus speaking. He says, the ruler of the world is coming. In other words, the enemy is coming. And he has nothing in me. Another translation says, the prince of this world is coming and he has no hold over me. So one of them says he has nothing in me. In other words, there's no jealousy in me for, for the enemy to hook, throw his hook, draw me in. There's no lust in in me for the enemy to throw hook, his hook and draw me in there's no laziness in me for him to throw his hook and draw me in so i no longer do the spiritual things of god it says he has nothing in me so the enemy can throw his hook as many times as he wants toward jesus and he will never catch anything because he has nothing in him the other translation says he has no hold over me he has no hold over me so if he throws his hook and he finds something in you, he can draw you in. And what does he have? He has a hold over you. He's holding you. He has a hold over you. So we need to be like Jesus where the enemy comes because the enemy will, will always come. And we need to be like Jesus that he has nothing in us. So regardless of how many times he throws his hook, he will never find anything. He will never catch anything. He will never catch us. So he will never have a hold on us. And we need to be like Jesus. Jesus needs to be our, our example. Let me tell you something about Jesus. Let me tell you something about Jesus. When Jesus got baptized, before Jesus got baptized, John the Baptist was calling people to be baptized for the remission of sins. So they were coming to the lake. John the Baptist was baptizing them when they were going down in the water. So what baptism represents is that you go down in the water and you, the sins that you're holding, when you go down in the water, those sins stay in the water. And then you come up a new creation. Spiritually, when you go down in the water, you are immersed in Jesus Christ. He takes away everything. You come up in your creation, right? That's what the water represents. 
when Jesus came, after many of them got baptized, Jesus came and got baptized. But where everybody was going down in the water and their sins were staying in the water, when Jesus went down into the water, he took on all the sins. And when he came up, he went down without sin. So other people were going down with sin, coming up without sin. Jesus went down without any sin and he came back holding the sins of the world on his body. Okay? That's what happened when he went down into the water. After the water, it says the spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So he had the sins of the world on him now. And he could have fallen in that wilderness when he was tempted by the devil. He could have fallen into temptation at any time, but he didn't. So when Jesus was in the desert and he overcame every temptation, every attack of the devil, he took authority. This is why I said earlier, when the devil tempts you, when he fails, you have dominion over him. But when he tempts you and you give in, you give him power over you. So when Jesus went into the wilderness after taking on all the sins of the world on his body, he was tempted in every way. And it's not just one, two temptations where you and I fall in sometimes, where we're tempted with two, three, four temptations. He had all of the sins of the world on him. So he was tempted with everything simultaneously, continuously. So we have no excuses, right? So when he went into the wilderness, he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. What do you think he was doing in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights? Because after the 40 days, that's when Satan himself came to tempt him. So during the 40 days, what do you think was happening? He was being tempted with everything by demons. And because they could not cause him to fall after the 40 days, the prince of the demons came, Satan himself. And again, and again, Jesus didn't fall. So we really have no excuse. So Jesus took authority. And then when Jesus, and then after the wilderness, Jesus went to Israel. And what did he do in, in Israel? Because he had this authority, he took the demon land. He took the land. So can you see how it works? The enemy comes to us. The Bible says, anywhere the sole of your feet touch, I will give you as an inheritance. Okay. Jesus says, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by no means harm you. So we have the power and authority to resist everything of the, of the evil one and to defeat the evil one because of the power of the Holy Spirit who is in us. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in this world. Okay. So when we, <clears throat> when the enemy tempts us, and he fails, we have dominion over him. And then, what, and then what do we do? We take the demon land. We keep taking land, taking land, taking land. Not just physically, but spiritually inside us as well. So where he was able to catch you with anger, you've taken that land. <laughs> it doesn't belong to you. You've got no power there. Where he used to catch you with jealousy, you've taken that land. He's, <laughs> you, he has no more power there. And so... What Jesus did is he disarmed principalities and powers by taking away our sin. We no way had any power over the, the enemy with all that sin on us. But Jesus took that away. And now all we must all do, because Jesus has already done the job, all we have to do now is just walk in that truth. Walk as the overcomer. Walk as the one who is victorious. Because Jesus has done everything else. To the point where the enemy has nothing in us. John 14.30. The ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. He has no hold over me. We have to walk in this truth. You see, the word of God abides in me. And I'm hoping the word of God abides in you. And so I have overcome the devil. The word of God must abide in you. Otherwise, how can you? And Jesus being the living word of God. Otherwise, how can you overcome the evil one? Because the word of God abides in you, the enemy has nothing in you. The enemy has no power over you. But the word of God has to abide in you. John 
15 verses 5 through 10. This is Jesus speaking. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and it withers and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burnt. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. So we have to abide in Jesus and his words need to abide, not here, in our hearts. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask anything you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. As my father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. So how do you abide in the love of Jesus? Keep his commandments. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. So we need to abide in Jesus and Jesus abide in us. We need to keep his commandments. When we're keeping the commandments of Jesus, the enemy will come in with his hooks and he will have nothing in us. There's nothing there to catch because I'm abiding in the commandments of God. I'm abiding in his love. When we stop abiding in the commandments of God, abiding in his love, when we stop that, we start to stray here, there and other places and, and we start getting trapped in places we have no business being in. Wrong relationships, wrong paths, wrong ways of thinking, wrong attitude of the heart, unrighteousness in the heart, evil thinking. Places we have no business being, being in. Things we have no business doing. Speaking things we have no business speaking. But when the word of God abides in us, we overcome these things. When the word of God abides in us, we overcome the devil. So we have to not be motivated by selfish appetites, worldly pleasures, whether it's drunkenness, drugs, um, uh, fornication, masturbation, greed, coveting, jealousy, hatred, pride, um, uh, homosexuality, fornication, adultery, idolatry. And you get the picture, things of this nature. You know, the, 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 the flesh desires, the things that I want to do, my selfish things. We, we must not be motivated by the appetites and pleasures of our flesh. We have to be motivated by God. We have to be motivated by God. Everything not of God must be thrown out of you. Only then will the enemy come in with his hook and find nothing in you because they've been thrown out of you. But if the things that are not of God are not thrown out and they are still kept there, the enemy comes in with his hook and he finds many things in you. Many things to catch you. Many things. And you will always be drawn away. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, he who is in Christ, remember Jesus said, abide in me. Notice the word in. Abide in me and my words abide in you. So it's not just about saying, yeah, I like Jesus. I receive Jesus. Uh, 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 I'm born again. For example, it's about abiding in him and him abiding in you. It's about walking in his commands. It's not just the be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word, lest you deceive yourselves, says the word of God. Do it, not just read it or hear it. OK, so notice the word in abide in me and I abide in you. And it says the same here. He who is in Christ. So it's not just about saying I'm a Christian or I was born a Christian or yeah, I like Jesus. I read a few verses per day. I pray a few prayers a day. It's not, it's not about that. It's not just about that. That superficial stuff. It's about being in, in. Like the Bible says in Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. 
there's the word in again and it's here also second corinthians 5 17 he who is in christ is a new creation the old has gone and the new is here so when you are in christ you are a new creation the old version of you has gone you know the old version of you where the devil throws his hook and catches you that's gone that person's gone the old has gone and the new is here the new version of you who is in christ so now you're in christ and christ is in you so when the devil throws his hook at jesus jesus says he has nothing in me so if you're in christ and christ is in you then the devil throws his hook at you he has nothing in you either because christ is in you and you are in him so you are a new creation therefore cast out that old stuff you can't be walking around you can't be a new creation walking around with that old stuff in you you can't be new wine in an old wine skin the old has to be thrown out so the devil won't have nothing in you the only reason why the devil has something in you is because some of that old stuff is still there throw that old stuff out the only way you're going to do that jesus tells you abide in me and my word abide in you and we need to stop reacting to the devil and start responding to god right we really need to you know god's love for us is already there God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It's already there. All the love that God has for us, which is way beyond our understanding, it's all there. Okay? And all we have to do is just receive, 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 receive. Do we know, you know, pray to the Holy, pray to God, ask the Holy Spirit to show you how to just receive, help me to receive all this love that God has for me. So I stop blocking. Help me become aware of it. Fill my heart with this love. And then you will overflow and you will give, 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 give to those around you. You know, allow yourself to be immersed in God's love. God's love is, he's, he's holy. He's a holy God. He's full of love for you. Allow yourself to receive this love. It's not about saying, I have to read the Bible one hour a day. I have to pray one hour a day. I have to sit in the presence of God one hour a day. And if I don't do these things, I'm a bad Christian. I'm not worthy of God. No, that's not about that. If we start going down that path, we turn it into some kind of a religion thing. It's about being full of God's love. Allowing yourself to just receive what he's giving you because he's giving, giving, giving. Allow yourself to receive. When you allow yourself to receive, you will want to read the Bible. You will want to pray. You will want to sit in the presence of God. I mean, when I finish these videos today, I can't wait. I'm just going to get in my Bible and just start reading, 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 reading the word of God. It's what I love to do, right? Right. Right. That being said, donation link is below. If that's upon your heart, it should be. Or, yeah, it should be. And um, my books can all be purchased below. God bless you.